A very good greetings to our lecturer and my fellow friends. Today our group, uh, we're going to present a geotechnical laboratory and a field test. Before that, let me introduce my team members. Our team members consist of six people, um, which is Brian, Hisami, Daniel, Diana, Zarul, and me, Navin. The field test or laboratory test that we choose was direct shear test, or when they call it shear test, shear box test. I will begin with the objective for this test, which has three objectives. Which is the first one is to describe the shear box test and determine the soil the soil shear strength parameter. The second one is to determine the failure strength of surface that has been set, and the third one is to find maximum value for load and shear test. So for the next introduction of shear direct shear test or shear box. Shear box is a test to determine the shear strength of the soil. Hence, this cell is to determine the failure of the strength of the surface that we set, and the apparatus contain a copper box horizontally middle of the soil samples, rand grip bars of the metal, porous disc can be placed at the back necessary to allow the sample drain. Usually, a 60 mm times 60 mm size will be used. To the test to the granular materials such as gravel or rocky clay, a larger box will be needed, such as 300 mm to the 300 mm. However, sometimes a larger dimension is also can be used. This test is carried out to either to carry out on either undistributed samples or remote samples. A normal load is applied to the specimen. Specimen and the specimen is sheared across the predetermined horizontal plane between the two halves of the shear box. From the result, the shear strength parameters can be determined. I'll continue with my my team members. Team members will be continue. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum to Dr. Zaisra. Uh, my name is Muhammad Zarul Zidri bin Jeffrey, and and I will continue the next slide, which is my topic is theory. Okay, the number one is the strength of soil depends on its resistance to shearing stresses. It is made up basically the components, which is frictional due to friction between the individual particles. The another one is cohesive, which is due to an addition between the soil particles. And the number two is the two components are combined in column shear strength equation, which is the formula is shear stress equals C plus Sigma F tan angle where shear stress is shearing resistance of soil at failure C apparent of cohesion of soil Sigma F total normal stress on failure plan the angle of shearing resistance of soil the another equation can also be written in terms of effective stress which is shear stress equals C plus Sigma F tan angle, where C apparent cohesion of soil in terms of effective stresses. The another one is Sigma F effective normal stress on failure plan. Angle uh, represent angle of shearing resistance of soil in terms of effective stresses. The another equation is Sigma F equal Sigma F minus U F where UF is represented by pore water pressure on failure plan. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. Uh, good evening and good afternoon. So, uh, the slide continues to me, so I can uh, explain or present about the procedure of the experiment. So, we start by looking at the first step so as you can see on the right side uh, the image uh, that is the parts of the shear box so the first step we need to do for the experiment is the parts of the shear box are assembled okay continue 
the second step is uh, the soil are compacted after bringing it to the optimum moisture condition okay uh, next slide uh, this is step 3 for the experiment as you can see in the image uh, it, it, it is explained that the sample is transferred the sample soil is transferred carefully into the shear box next step is number four so as you can see uh, step number four is the loading plate is placed on top of the upper porous plate the weight of the loading carrier is recorded and is placed on the loading cap as you can see uh, this step is uh, applied in the picture next to the description of this the step okay that, that is all from me uh, now I would like uh, to let my friend continue uh, Daniel continue for the uh, next steps that is all from me thank you okay thank you Ryan next step number five all the die gates are positioned and the readings are set to zero the alignment screws which hold two of two halves of the shear box together is removed next uh, for step number six the two diagonally the two diagonally opposite screws are tightened until there is a small gap between upper and lower boxes to reduce the frictional force step number seven the desired normal load is applied when there is vertical displacement the dial gauges indicate a constant reading and the dial gauge will be reset to zero step number eight the removed screws haven't been checked and the motor is started to produce the desired constant rate of shearing step number nine the readings are taken a shear load from the proven ring b shear displacement which is horizontal displacement c vertical displacement at every 10 division in incremental horizontal dial gauge step number 10 the test is stopped when the shear load is uh, started to reduce or remain constant for at least three readings and the last one the soil is removed and the procedure is repeated with different normal loads that's all from me thank you so i will proceed to the example of data for this direct shear test which is in the table we can see it has two columns which is item and quantity so the, the first item is specimen length 2.489 Specimen width 2.489 Specimen height 1.193 Mass of wet sample 1095 Mass of dry sample 1000 gram Maximum dry density of specimen 110.4 Maximum dry unit weight of specimen 48.95 Specific gravity of solid 2.13 and last one is maximum void ratio 1.716. So the next one is the table. From the table, we can see the ultimate shear strength, the normal stress, and the angle of friction for the test A, test B, and test C. So for the test A, Ultimate shear strength is 3.44 The normal strength is 6.5 The angle of friction is 27.9191 So for the test B is uh, The ultimate shear strength is 8.87 The normal strength is 12.72 The angle of friction for test B is 34.89 So the last one is test C, uh, ultimate shear strength. For test C is 10.24. The 
The normal race for testing is 19.00. For angle of friction is 28.32. That's it from me. Thank you. Okay, next we move to the analysis of data. So this one, as you can see the graph, which is a shear stress versus horizontal displacement for test air graph. Uh, from the graph, you can see that the sand is quite dense. So we move to the next graph, which is a vertical displacement versus horizontal displacement for test air. As from the graph, you can see that the sand is quite loose. And then we move to the next graph. So from this graph, this is a shear stress versus horizontal displacement for test B. And then for from the graph, you can see that the sand is quite dense. Then we move for the vertical displacement versus horizontal displacement for test B. You can see that the graph is very loose. The sand is very loose. And then next one is a shear stress versus horizontal displacement for test C. And from the graph, you can see that the sand is quite dense. And then this is the last graph, which is a vertical displacement versus horizontal displacement for test C. And from the graph, you can see that the sand is quite loose. So this one is the ultimate shear strength versus normal stress for test A, B, and C. So from this graph, you can see that the highest is a test C and the lowest is test A. So what we can analyze from the graph, uh, we can see that uh, a single specimen, a single sand specimen cannot act uh, as a very dense and very loose simultaneously. So, but from the value of degree, it makes sense because the, from the manual it was 30.1 degree and from the graph, we all get, from the calculation, we, we get uh, all the degrees between 27 and 35. So, the conclusion is, uh, there is likely an error in procedure or during interpretation of data during this uh, experiment and uh, the second one is the observation doesn't make sense because a single sense specimen cannot act both simultaneously uh, which is it acts like a very dense and very loose so and the third one is due to the fact that there is an error in this experiment so the experiment not actually accomplished that's all thank you everyone